my dear people of Southern Cameroons, my dear people of Ambazonia, fellow brave warriors of our liberation movement. Accept liberation greetings from me, John Akura, today. Today is Friday, and today is October 21, 2022. My people, I come here today for us to take a very quick look into some of the issues surrounding the recent meeting in Canada between the people of the Southern Cameroons and the La République du Cameroon in the presence of the government of Canada and a representative of the United Nations organization. My people, there is a lot of talk going out there. There is so much, so much manipulation going on out there. And there is a lot of falsehood being spilled out there. Listen, while I'm coming here today for us to have an opportunity to go through some of the salient issues that will help people have a greater understanding of what happened in Canada, I would like us, my people of Ambazonia, to know that it is going to be a very difficult moment ahead. Difficult because we are at war. And because we are at war, it is not always easy to communicate everything at every standpoint. I know a lot of people will say anything that is happening in darkness is definitely not good, but I have a message for you. The message I have for you is that when it comes to the diplomatic arena, the best way to eat that meal is in total silence, is in total discretion, and it's in total secrecy at certain levels and then of course there will always come a time for communication i'm aware that wherever there is a communication gap charlatans will emerge from every angle to try to fill this gap and what has happened what happened in canada has given me and it definitely would give a good lot of us an opportunity to begin to understand who we have been listening to it will give us an opportunity to begin to analyze the kind of people who have been claiming to us that they have very, very fight information that they are disseminating to us. Today, more than ever before, we have a clear opportunity to distinguish between manipulators, educators, and people who truly have information to share with us as we continue to prosecute this liberation movement going forward. My people, let me be very clear here. Listen, all what you are hearing out there about Canada, a good lot of it is simply junk. Then you have a lot of conjecture. And then you have those who know clearly that they are telling lies and they are intent on spilling these lies. I want to set the scene for all of us to begin to understand very quickly. Listen, La République du Cameroon is at the verge, at the verge of very, very serious trouble. And consequently, the time is getting very ripe for La Republic du Cameroon to want real talks. This is something that we're ignoring. I have said here before about the fact, that very important fact, that when two warring factions attain that level where they are undergoing mutual hurting so they get to that mutual hurting stalemate the time will be right for the two parties to feel like now we can talk and let me say this on the ambazonian side we are warming up we have faced our fair share of problems and our own share of problems has mainly been division but we are gradually overcoming that constraint but for la republic du cameroon they have several fronts that they are facing and at the time, such fronts should not even exist because within the government of La Republic du Cameroon, the level of division is unparalleled. That country is getting ready for regime change. And that kind of regime change, that happens like an earthquake. And so therefore, my people, make no mistake. When I hear some people say, oh, La Republic du Cameroon was not in Canada. They were mainly southern cameroonians from la republic du cameroon cpd and militants who were sent to canada i laugh but trust me 
I won't delve into the nitty gritties of, you know, wanting to tell you who was there and who was not there. But there is vital information that I am on this set today to share with each and every one of us. So, don't go away. Yo, welcome back. I said a while ago that La République du Cameroon is facing its fair share of serious troubles. Listen, my people. You know, some time ago, when I came to this platform, I mentioned that the succession war in La République du Cameroon was hurting up very seriously. You have on one side the Ekang Betty, or they call themselves the Ekang Bulu, but I know that they are the Ekang Betty. But these are people who consider that it is their birthright to keep power. And these Bulu people are led by Louis Paul Motazé. They are led by that other gesticulator that you hear they call Amugo Bellinger. And all of these people have their own god at A2D, who is Mvondo Ayelo, the director of the civil cabinet. And of course, these ones are routing for either Frank Beer to be the next president, so they stand behind him, or Louis Paul Mortazé himself has his own personal ambitions to stand there. But don't forget that Chantal Bia and the Nanga clan have always done everything possible to ensure that Mr. Ferdinand Gongo, who has generally already passed even for vice president of that country, or the de facto president, to be the next person in charge. But at the same time, the Northerners don't want to hear it with one ear, and they have advanced names like Alamin Usman May and well others. But the Bamilike clan, they who have been considered the, I mean, the condemned, like they say in French, les damnés de la nation, also think that the time is ripe for them too to attempt to take power in that country. And so with all these protagonists, the battle has continually been fierce and very fierce. But at this point in time, something is about to happen. Because while Ngongo and the others thought, and his clan, they thought that they already had the leeway. No. Frank Bia and the others have found a way to eliminate him just like they did to a good lot of other contenders to that very seat. Of course, we know what they did to Edgar Alem Mbengo. We all know what they did to Atangana Mebara. We all know what they did to, in short, there are so many of them who had already been kicked in the ass. So right now, the next person on the firing line is of course, Ferdinand Ngongo. How the fall be? Will he fall very easily? Will he just let go? Don't forget that a good lot of these people have their supporters in the military. So much as we consider that the military of La Republic du Cameroon is solidly united behind Mr. Paul Bia, each of these protagonists have a lot of money. And therefore, France has one concern. The concern France has is if Cameroon flies into too many pieces and they happen to lose Cameroon, lose their foothold in Cameroon, they have lost their foothold in Central Africa and that is likely to uproot them from all of Francophone Africa. That is why at this point, France is getting more and more favorable for there to be overtures towards Amazonians to try and see if some kind of peace can be forged. That is their imagination. Can some kind of peace be forged? Is there a way some kind of compromises can be made and things remain intact? Or at worst, they go in straight away for negotiations and damn the outcome. But my people of Ambazonia, either way, the people of the Southern Cameroons stand clearly to tap benefits from these circumstances. And this is the ultimate moment we have been waiting for. Will they succeed? to elude the disaster that is right before them or would they do what is right 
This is the million dollar question that is on the minds of not only the people of Ambazonia, but also the people of La Republique du Cameroon. And therefore, to go now back to the, the discussions that took place recently in Canada, I want to say this, and by the way, if you're just joining, please go ahead and share the link as much as possible. Let's reach as many people as possible so that they get the right information and stop allowing themselves to be manipulated with, I mean, a lot of conjecture and things that are just not right. Because I've had the opportunity to follow a lot of broadcasts. I've followed even, even some citizens of La République du Cameroon who have generally claimed that they are on the side of the people of Ambazonia, saying horrible things. I learned someone even talked of Elvis Ngole Ngole and uh, uh, Paul Tassong being in Canada. Some of them even went as far as talking of uh, uh, Comrade uh, Fontaine Neba. Oh my goodness, this is really amazing. Comrade Fontaine Neba, Bala and others being in Canada to represent the civil society. But very interestingly enough, I was on the phone and I was in communication with Comrade uh, Fontem Neba in the United States throughout this period. And trust me, some even claimed that I, in person, Ba'akuro, was in Canada. I am surprised that even to this date, some are still looking at the video that was shot in Nigeria at Ibis Hotel in February of 2017. I'm believing that Pam Fongalamfo Wilfred Tassang and all the others uh, Barista Blessed Shufai Savism that they were released and sent to Canada to go there and validate some kind of I don't know what. My people, I'd like us to begin from the basics. Let us know one very important thing. I'm not going to come here to disclose the members of the various delegations that were in Canada. That is not going to happen. You won't hear that from me though. But trust me, the vain speculation won't take anybody anywhere. This is one thing Southern Cameroonians must come to terms with. At this level of our liberation movement, we are going to win with intelligence, with our brain, not with our hearts. I said that before, that when people are locked in a liberation movement like ours, it gets to a point where the underdog, because we are clearly the underdog in this uh, conflict, where the underdog win with the head, with the brain, and not with the heart. When we continue to want to let our emotions govern us, trust me, my people, we will be hitting the wrong court. And so to make things clear, what is happening now, that people are running amok, town criers have come out from everywhere, some who can't even spell their names are coming out to teach Mba Akuro international relations and all of those things, that is not even my business. But what I'm saying here is, my people, note this very seriously. You have not heard anything from anyone who was in Canada out there because in this liberation movement today, at this point in time, men are being separated from boys. Women are being separated from girls. People who know and understand that what we are engaged in it's a serious matter that concerns the freedom of a country. A country of 8 million people are at the helm now working very seriously. And they know that this is not about showmanship. They know that this is not about me. They know what it means to get to a place and they say no disclosures and there are no disclosures. That is exactly what is happening now. So the parrots who all along have tried to, you know, position themselves as it is either me, I'm either there or nothing is happening, are beginning to learn today that when it comes to matters of real mediation and when things are following the norms, they happen differently. Yes, they happen differently. My people, when I hear some people already talking now about the resolutions that they arrived at in Canada, I say, these are people who don't master mediation 101. If you did, you understand that when parties are still engaged in exploratory talks, there is no such thing you can be talking about as resolutions. The only thing, the only thing that they may come to would be an agreement as to whether after the discussions that they had, white and large and everything, there is need 
for another meeting. That is the only thing you expect to get as agreement from such a meeting. Nothing more, nothing less. So when I hear people talking of, oh, they went there, they said, okay, grant us general amnesty, grant us, who starts making uh, recommendations at that level? From where? You know, what is happening today is that those who went to Switzerland gave our people the impression that as you just move one minute before they finish telling you that, look, there's an intention to, you already pick your pen and you're signing papers. That doesn't happen when things are taken seriously. Exploration has to go on and on and on until the parties come to the concrete agreement that now we are ready to talk. At that time, the facilitator will graduate from being a facilitator to a mediator if both parties that agree that now we are willing and we are ready to talk, if they also pick that facilitator and say, we trust you to be a mediator. At that time, a process begins to come in place. Otherwise, what is happening now is we meet, we just greet, you see, this is this situation, it's not interesting, this is what we are going through, and all of those things. But we have the feeling that it makes sense for us to talk. And I say, okay, I'm hearing you, I'm thinking perhaps you may be serious, you may not be serious, but this is what I think for you to show me that you are serious, that you are ready to talk. So those are the kind of things that come into discussion. Not about whole oh, release prisoners, whole oh, we want federation, no, we don't want federation, whole oh, uh, we draw the, uh, your, your, your soldier back to the barracks. Those things don't happen because the kind of representation, the people who are there at this level to represent, they don't have powers to engage the responsibility of either parties. This is exactly what we should all know. When you know this and understand this, it would dawn on you, therefore, that there was, it was not possible to reach any agreement or to reach any resolutions. It doesn't happen just like that. This is something that we must all know. And I hear some people say the Cameroon government was not even present in Canada. Why they are saying the Cameroon government was not even present in Canada? Their Aparashiks are talking of the Cameroon government sending a delegation to Canada with the intention to what a contradiction. For three years, we were told about a process. At no single moment did a fly even represent the government of Cameroon in displacement. My people of Ambazonia, like I pointed out earlier, at this stage, we will have to learn it the hard way. That there are too many things that will be kept away from us until the time is ripe for us to be informed about these things. Because I am doing this communication to let each and everyone know that there is no point getting into vain, vain speculations, a lie, opening your mind up for, you know, a lot of dirt to be put inside and you are thinking that you are gathering information about what is going on. Both parties are not going to say anything to anybody until that time when it becomes propitious it is the facilitator that would, using a press statement, communicate to the world what must have happened. If at the end of the day, this overture, this exploration is abortive, the parties don't consider that the time is ripe to have any mediated talks, it will end as it is. And each party would then have the possibility at that time to tell their people exactly what happened and why there has never been or why there was never any continuation. But at this point, don't expect anything from anybody. This is as clear as death. So the information I'm about to share with you is the information that is authorized to be shared. Just so that we know, just so that we stop you know, letting our minds wander just so that we stop thinking too much on things that are not necessary. So I hear people talk about uh, monologue and all of those things. Let me say this. I hear people say, oh, the government of Switzerland, oh no, the, the, uh, I beg your pardon, the government of Canada is, has torpedoed Switzerland or has done what is, has stopped Switzerland. But let me say this. Those who are today resisting, condemning, showing distrust to the government of Canada. 
the same people subscribed to the Swiss initiative. That Swiss initiative was sponsored by the government of Canada. Every single dollar that HD spent in paying them flights to Geneva, paying them flights to, you know, I don't know, what, to Zurich or whatever part of Switzerland, that money came from the government of Canada. Every single dollar that they received from HD, the Swiss NGO, to organize sensitization meetings or whatsoever, that money came from the coffers of the government of Canada. This shows you, therefore, that the government of Canada has been interested in the situation between La Republique du Cameroon and the Southern Cameroons from the outset. And they were ready, therefore, to mobilize funds as long as HD or the Swiss government had the capability to bring the parties to the table. But at the end of the day, when it was clear that the Swiss couldn't go any further, Canada, therefore, decided to rise to the occasion and give it a try. So, therefore, it has been Canada all along. You can't accept Canada yesterday and today you say, no, because it is Canada. It has always been Canada. Let us be clear about this. And again, don't forget that from day one we made clear that we will only have anything to do with La République du Cameroon in a situation where, one, we are meeting, our delegations are meeting out of Cameroon. That is a neutral country. And number two, in the presence of a third party. So, were these delegations meeting in, in, in La République du Cameroon? No. Were they meeting in a neutral place? Yes. Was there a third party? Of course, Canada was playing the facilitator and there was a representative of the United Nations present. Now, listen, my people. These are conditions we have always given to begin engaging in any form of thing, not even yet in negotiations. We are not at the level of negotiations. Negotiations have not started because there is no process in place just yet. So those who are already talking about negotiations, they simply misunderstand us. Now, I like to say, with what happened in Canada, the perspectives are certainly good. Why do I say the perspectives are good? The perspectives are certainly good because I've read in a lot of places that there definitely may be another meeting, which means, therefore, that when the delegates met and talked, they definitely came to the agreement that maybe we need to go back, do consultations, carry the messages brought here and there, the message of goodwill, that maybe we should start talking back to the powers that be. Let there be consultations. Let there be research. And at the end of the day, they may come back. And when they are coming back, it may necessarily not be the same people. It may necessarily not be the same level of representation. And at that time, the agenda may definitely not be the same like it was on day one or during the first encounter. So my people of Amazonia, the path ahead is still slightly long. And this is what we recommended when there were overtures in 2019. If you had leaders at the highest level moving, then you expect that as soon as they're finishing their perhaps they have no one to consult, they go ahead to sign. But that doesn't happen when people want to take things seriously, when people want to do things following the SOPs of the trade. And that is where we are as far as this situation is concerned. Was there a meeting in Canada? Yes, there was. Did this meeting bring together delegations from La Republic du Cameroon and from the Southern Cameroons? Yes, there were. Now, the next question people are bothered about, who picked the people on the Southern Cameroon side who would go to Canada? Listen, I want to embarrass each and every one here. For the longest time, we had let division linger in our means, in, in, in our midst, to the point where we never ever believe that at some given point in time, we can operate as a people without necessarily pursuing group obedience. 
That's why we ask these questions. Because as a matter of fact, even those who are standing on rooftops and screaming, they know exactly how people were contacted. They know exactly how those who met in Canada to talk on behalf of Ambazonia were picked. Maybe what they don't know is how the next people who will go for any future meeting, if in the end there is, will be picked. That is why you get all this noise. That's why you get all this confusion. The one and most important thing we must bear in mind is the people of the Southern Cameroons have made their resolve clear that it is independence or resistance forever. We have all seen the document from the UN Human Rights Council, the working group. It restates and reaffirms the position earlier taken by the Human Rights Commission or the, or the, the Human Rights uh, uh, Court in the Banjul, an arm of the African Union that upheld, raised and upheld the right of the people of the Southern Cameroons to self-determination. This is an arm of the African Union. First thing it did, it determined that the people of the Southern Cameroons are a people recognized as a people under international law. I will remember Professor Olinga, a gentleman of La Republique du Cameroon of Betty origin. When he was teaching public international law in Iraq, he never missed an, an opportunity to remind his students that the people of the Southern Cameroons are a people under international law. That was reaffirmed by this human rights court in the Banjul and upheld. And they didn't only end there, they also reaffirmed, restated the rights of the people of the Southern Cameroons to self-determination. And therefore, my people of Ambazonia, let it be clear in the minds of all and sundry that we are in 2022. We are not in 1961. Nobody anywhere is ever going to ram down a unitary state, a failed federal union, or whatever form of union with the Republic of Cameroon into our throats. That is not going to happen. Let it be clear to each and every one. So all these apprehensions of people trying to create confusion and fear in our minds in order to fundraise off of that is uncalled for. So therefore, I want to say this. The meeting was effectively held in Canada. And the good news that Southern Cameroonians must get is we scored an important victory. I mean, a very important victory. And listen, each time you make a stride, it is important to acknowledge that you made a stride because that encourages you to know that you are moving in the right direction. We don't have to be too hard on ourselves. So, the piece of information I was authorized to disseminate is that in Canada, La République du Cameroon expected that they were going to hold talks with representatives of various groups, movements, and organizations of La République du Cameroon, sep of, of, uh, sorry, of Ambazonia separately. They were convinced and they had assigned time, time slots. From this time to this time, Egg of Sea. From that time to that time, uh, APLM. From this other time to that time, IG1. From this other time to that time, IG2. That time to that time, IG3, IG4. This time to this other time, the consortium. This other time to that other time, SCNC. But that is exactly what we denied them. Even the Canadian government thought they were going to have separate talks with each of our groups in order to, at the end of the day, see if they could help to now get us together to start synergizing. My people of Ambazonia. Our people who went to Canada bunched together and told them, no, that was not going to happen. And so therefore, 
the government of Canada was very, very shocked. I should say agreeably shocked and embarrassed to find that despite all the cacophony on social media, it were possible for the people of the Southern Cameroons to sit together from various groups, movements, and organizations and decide that we would, you would talk with us as one group. And they spoke with one voice. The delegation from La République du Cameroon was beyond embarrassed. I'm sure upon their return, they are going to start thinking differently. Whatever strategy they had in place, that it was a divide and rule that they will use in order to continue to sow confusion in our midst and run away with it, they failed. They failed and failed big time. That is the main takeaway from Canada. That is the big takeaway from Canada. And I'm convinced, therefore, that this is a policy we are definitely going to pursue. We are going to demonstrate to the international community that Despite all the noise and the confusion, when it becomes clear that the interest of Ambazonia is at stake, we run together. We rush towards each other very quickly and we get going. So my people, where it stands today, what I have to tell each and every one of us is that the many town criers out there who are continuing to spew confusion, to tell manipulation, they will sing. You haven't heard anything just yet. Gird your loins and get ready for so much more manipulation to come your way. But trust me, you will have to learn to operate in a setup where people know that we are talking here about independence for our country that we are talking here about matters of state, that we are talking here about the freedom of 8 million people. And therefore, those who are involved have accepted to be treated as a sacrificial lamb because we have to get there. You are not going to get anything from anybody, not anytime soon, until the time is ripe for the adequate information, accurate information, verified to be disseminated to all and sundry. For now, the big thing you need to know is something is happening in Ambazonia. Something is happening around the world. Something is happening. And before long, you will all be edified. The only thing we have to continue doing right now, continue to fund the struggle. Continue to keep the struggle alive. Continue to solidify our positions. Because that is what is important at this point in time. Those who will continue to sit, to explore on our behalf, need that backing. They need our solid backing in order to take us to where we want to go. It will not be done by 8 million Ambazonians at the same time. I was not in Canada. I'm unlikely to be there at any given point in time. Let me make this clear. Leaders don't go to those kind of meetings. Leaders take decisions. Leaders sit behind. They come back. They render them accounts. They call the advisors. They call even external advisors. They talk to them and at the end, leaders take decisions. Leaders don't rush to the forefront and start finding themselves being evaluated, being assessed, being pushed from left and right, and being thingified. That happened before, but it will not happen again. Therefore, my people of Ambazonia, let us remain focused on financing this movement. Let us remain focused on supporting this movement. Let us remain focused on pushing this movement. Victory is ours to lose. To God be the glory.